Yeah, that's over here. Sorry. I'm uh, testing my camera because sometimes it overheats. Okay, where am I again? Okay, so after 30 minutes or an hour sitting here, you, you really want to go home? Is that the disciple of Christ? No. It becomes natural for each one of us that when we have the Spirit of God, we have the Spirit of Christ, we are inkling. Our desire is always to be with those who have the same Spirit. As they say, birds with the same feather flock together. It is but natural. Natural. That's why it is always natural that on a Sunday, your feet will always be looking for that fellowship. And once you miss once the fellowship, the whole week will not be complete. The whole week will be a sad week. And you will be longing that Sunday will come again so that I will meet again my fellow Christians. That I could feel the Spirit of Christ from them. Even the smile. You know, the smile of the world is different from the smile of Christians. That's why when smiles becomes fake, in a church, I would rather leave the church than stay there. Because in a church, smile should always be authentic. You cannot fake smiles and happiness inside the church of Jesus Christ. So the other thing is that it is not only a matter of having Sunday school, having services, having preaching. It is important that we live as models. The question always will be is, probably we are so perfect if we are here in church. But what will happen if some of our brethren will be living with us? Probably I will invite some of you to live with us and then just experience what it is to be with a Christian couple. You would probably laugh sometimes. But then that is the challenge. That's why in a family, we look like models of Christians inside the church on Sunday. But your children, our children will see us during the weekends. And they will know if we are fake or not. Right. That's why the best disciple, the best discipling principle is the family. We cannot disciple people unless we disciple our children. Because they are the one that sees us as mothers. And so what is making disciple? Shall we read this again? Living a By just saying that we share the gospel, somebody believe it, and then it's okay. No. That is not the goal of the Great Commission. The goal of the Great Commission are those people who say they believe should have a transformed life. Those who people who say that they were justified should also be sanctified. Because those people who are sanctified are the only ones that will be justified, sanctified, glorified. Those who are just justified because they believe in Christ will be sanctified by following Christ and they will be glorified and go to heaven because of the reality of justification and sanctification. You cannot jump from justification to glorification. Without sanctification, and what is sanctification? Huh? It is the removal of hindrances. 
the sins that beset us in Hebrews chapter 12, those are the things that hinders us in the sanctification. We have to overcome all of them. And then we will have the glorification. The sad thing is sometimes we miss the truth. We thought that the chain, we call that in theology, the ordo salutes, the order of salvation. That we can jump just justification, glorification. No. In the middle of that is the most important thing and that is where the church role, the members of the church role should be the process of sanctification. So sanctification is what? We are being transformed into the character of Christ. And number two, and that our values, the worldly values that we have before, when we become Christ, will now become kingdom values. And where do you find the kingdom values? Which book of the Bible we find kingdom values? The book of? The first book of the New Testament? Matthew, Matthew chapter? Sermon in the Mount? Five? What more? Chapter five? Chapter six? Chapter? Seven, chapter, chapter seven. <laughs> so, three chapters. Okay, three chapters you have the Sermon on the Mount. And it talks about how blessed it is to be in the kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So those kingdom principles, you will find there. The principle of what? When somebody hits you, what do you do? Okay? You open the other chain. Okay? When somebody throws you a stone, okay, you throw bread. You, you love your brethren, you love your friends, but you watch your enemies. You also love your enemies. Those things are kingdom values which is quite opposite, opposite to the world. So those things that we will learn as becoming disciples of Christ. Okay, so even in, in the context of the church, we always give in for other people. We mature ones, we look at other people, we see them as probably more immature, and then we tolerate just give them an allowance because we understand better. And therefore, making disciple is being active in the mission of Christ. And this mission is bounded, grounded in the church. What did Christ said to Peter? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it is the church that God founded, built. And this is the church that we have in that has the mission. When you talk about discipleship, you will always find some sort of DNA. You can, you can see who the disciple is and probably who are not the disciple. The, the true believers and the fake believers. Okay. Statistics say that 85 to 96 percent of Christians are still spiritual beings. I believe that and I would believe because it is also the failure of the church to train or to discipline or to disciple the process of discipling the members of the church. Therefore, the role of the leaders of the church is to disciple the members of the church so that these members will be elevated and become leaders and officers themselves so that they can, in a way, also disciple others. Amen. As part of our goals in life, you know, when I go here, we have so many goals here. Why are we in Thailand? I think nobody is here, even our pastors, because they want 
to have spiritual maturity. Probably the hundred percent they come here to reach the Thai people. We always think about ourselves, our physical needs, our physical maturity. That's why I would agree that only 20% have spiritual maturity as a life goal. So the question would be, are you part of that 80%? You have some other goals. Or are you part of the 20% who, who really would say, yes, I want to grow as a Christian. Therefore, I want to attend Sunday school. I want to attend services. I want to attend afternoon fellowships. I want to attend prayer meetings. I want to attend Sunday Bible, uh, what do you call this? Sunday. Pastor, what is the Sunday? Natin? So, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Cottage, cottage fellowship. So, these are the things that we want because our goal is that we become spiritually mature, that we grow in age. The sad part is that 75% of young people at the age of 19 leaves the church. My children, for example, they will follow me. We are like, as Brother Nestor before said, we are like a, a family of ducks. Okay, I am in the head. My wife will be next. My three kids will be following. So we march with big Bibles. So this is how we we grow until they become 16 years old. And then somebody will probably uh, leave the house and then they say, okay, don't want to go to church anymore. My principle is, if you are in my house, you follow what I do. That's the principle. That's uh, discipleship. If you don't want to follow me, if you don't want to obey me, the door is open. You can go, do whatever you want, but not in my house. Okay, so this is, the, this is quite the principle. And the problem right now is that young people who say they are, they believe, yet there is no growth. And then at age 19, they leave the church. They have their own lives to live. In America, it will be crazy if you watch The Red Check. My famous, uh, my favorite YouTube uh, uh, group, channel about Christians and about uh, what's happening in the world. So one in 30 of the Americans have a biblical worldview, which means that 29 out of 30 does not believe in God, does not believe in the Bible, does not believe in authority, does not believe in truth. That's why that's the problem in America right now. The principle of hedonism, what is good for me is good. Okay? I don't care for anybody. I just care for my joy. So if I'm happy, if I'm married with similar sex, who will judge me? I'm happy. That's the, the, the measure. And people would say, they will not comment. Okay, if you're happy, go on. Go on. If you want to marry a dog because you are happy with that, go on. And that's what they're proposing now. If Donald Trump did not want, they could have proposed group marriages, one woman, two men, or two, two, two men, Two man, one man, two women. <laughs> anyway, it's always about man having so many wives. <clears throat> they, they can do that. Because there is no hindrance. If they will be happy by doing that, then it's okay. So these are the things that as Christians, and please check your clock if it says 12 o'clock. I should stop. 12 10. 12 10. Last. Okay. Uh, Okay, so only 9% of born-again Christians have biblical worldview. So even for us who are here in church, we still have some confusion 
as to what Christianity is all about and what is the world all about. So, do you think these things that we're discussing, so next time, we will continue, we have 50 uh, slides, I'm wow. in slide number 11. Uh, yeah, so we will continue next time. Amen. Okay, any question or any comment? Otherwise, I will ask Chen. Help Chen. Ma'am Divina. Ma'am Rada. Diba, sorry, uh, Engineer, yung tanong ko lang yung ano ba yung na-mention mo kasi yung yung role ko ng And so, there is no concept of church. The first thing that I understood, I did not understand anything about church. And so I sit on a Sunday and I watch somebody on television, Jimmy Swagger, who are the famous others. So a lot of them, so I just watched there and then I thought that that is Christianity, that is okay. But then I realized that when I grow mature 